Edmonton, the capital city of the province of Alberta. A river city, a festival city, home of the Edmonton Oilers, and a can-do city with a mural proclaiming, take a risk, it's the most Edmonton thing you can do. Saskatchewan River runs through the city, but that will have to wait for another day. It's time to get out of the city. It's time to head west. Every September long weekend, a group of friends make the three hour plus drive from Edmonton, Alberta to a spot where the Athabasca and Burland rivers meet. The last hour of the drive is via unpaved logging roads until the eagerly anticipated view of the bridge and a first glimpse of the majestic beauty of the Columbia Glacier Fed River. The weekend is affectionately named Man vs. Fish and is led by Mike and Terry. The Athabasca River begins at the Columbia Glacier in Jasper National Park and travels about 1,500 kilometers northeast across Alberta and drains into Lake Athabasca in the northeast. Lake Athabasca flows into the Slave River and joins the Mackenzie River which eventually flows to the Arctic Ocean, traveling over 1,230 kilometers from start to glacier to mouth. As the Athabasca River flows, it also goes through a tremendous change in elevation from 1,062 meters at Jasper to about 205 meters at its mouth in Lake Athabasca. There are four natural regions in the Athabasca watershed, Rocky Mountain, Foothills, Boreal Forest, and Canadian Shield. The central and lower areas are mainly Boreal Forest, while the upper region includes Foothills and Rocky Mountains. The Athabasca River is an historic waterway for First Nations peoples and the fur trade. The Sakani, Shushwa, Kootenai, Salish, Stony, and Cree tribes hunted and fished along the river prior to European colonization. From about 1778, the Athabasca River was a key part of the main fur trade route from the Mackenzie River to the Great Lakes. Athabasca and Berlin, a fishing tale. Nine years and run in this weekend on, on the Athabasca Berlin here. And uh, this year has probably been the toughest fishing. 
people happy to have been getting all that much, but uh, still having a great time out cooking over the fires and having a few adult beverages to make the evening go a little faster. You know, fishing is such great fun in that, uh, for me, standing out in the river, trying to figure out what fly, or even if I'm hardware fishing, what lure uh, it, am I going to be trying to entice the fish to come. Uh, it, it is, for me, a zen-like experience at times. You're out there, you're concentrating, you, you're in nature, you've got the water, you've got the wind, you've got the sun. And you are just out there and you kind of like to forget about everything else and you're just concentrating on what you're doing at that point in time. And as a kid, I grew up fishing in southern Alberta with my father and used to have great, great memories of, of doing that. And then, of course, as you get a little older and you get busy with life, um, we, Michael and I kind of got back into this probably 15, 16 years yeah. ago. Uh, through our, the, our <clears throat> spouses, who have been friends for uh, since they were little girls, and uh, we found that you know we did ice fishing, we've done all sorts of different things, and it's a it, fishing uh, when you have a good fishing buddy, and you can go out, you solve the world's problems, and you come back and have a, have a few beverages, you get some good meals, uh, you have a great experience. But I think to going forward, what I would like, obviously, for my kids and my grandkids is to see if they can really develop the fishing bug as well. And, uh, you know, they've done a little bit of it in the past, but of course they're busy with their kids right now. And, and uh, but I'm hoping that over the next year or two, it'll, they'll participate in what Michael and his son and son-in-law and friends have been doing with this man versus fish. A good weekend of bonding just about fishing. I grew up in, a, in Manitoba on a farm, southern Manitoba. And my early recollections were going to Lockport on the docks below the weir and fishing for bullheads and, uh, and bass as a young child, six, seven years old with my older brother. And uh, then, you know, after that, uh, you know, went to university and came out to, to Alberta uh, for work and during that period of time really didn't fish until I got to Alberta because uh, you know here we'd heard about the great streams and the fishing in Alberta so uh, when I first moved out here my family and, and I we, we would go fishing and our first son we, we cooked him one day on the on the uh, on the on the lake when we're walleye fishing fishing he was six months old and, he, he got quite sunburnt, unfortunately, and we kind of kind of disappointed in that after all these years. But no long-term symptoms, as far as we can tell. And uh, and then you know I got into steelhead fishing uh, when I was younger man in my early 30s. And then the family came along, got bigger, and worked, and, and stopped for a lot of years, for probably 15 years until uh, Terry and I got back together or got together, I guess, and, and started fishing and. Now, uh, you know, I re recovered my fly tying, which I used to do when I was young. Took it over at WW and Arcade. I took my first lessons over there from the old guy that used to sell the fishing equipment. So for me, it's been part of my life. And, and for me, it's, it's not even anymore about catching fish, to tell you the honest truth. It's just the experience. And, and the boat really enhances that for me and, and the friendship that we have and just getting away. And, and uh, I'm, I've been retired for quite a while and I'm not under stress, but every time I take Terry out there, he's coughing when we start and after 10 minutes in the truck, truck is coughing, cough, coughing is gone, gone and, and uh, there's no more signs of any stresses. So it is kind of zen. And then, you know, when we go out fishing in our town, he's at my place at six in the morning, we go for steelhead. And the guy sleeps till nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we should be out there. That's how relaxed he is out there. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to tell what it really means. My, my granddaughter was just uh, over before we came uh, to do some, uh, some stuff. And, and I was talking to her, she's gonna be three soon, that maybe next year we're gonna go fishing. And she's already knows that grandpa goes fishing. 
So, uh, and my son is fishing and uh, hopefully the grandchildren like Terry's will soon get into that. And, uh, and Man Against Fish was the, that kind of inroad where we do it on a regular basis. And hopefully we can leave that legacy for our grandchildren. This is great country and, and uh, the fishing is getting a little tougher. And I guess because we fished 30, 35 years ago, we never appreciated just how good fishing was. And yeah. it is getting tougher, but uh, hopefully uh, we, we need some conservation and we need some restocking and, and that's coming. If you're just new to fishing, or in particular fly fishing, um, I would suggest, you know, check out in the Edmonton area here, Reed's Fly Shop in the West End, the Fishing Hole on the south side of the West End, and both Cabela's stores have got some knowledgeable staff as well. And, you know, just tell them your expectations, and they'll get you started with a basic rod and reel combination kit and it'll have a good line on it and then as you develop a little bit more experience um, you'll be able to really start to define you know the type of fishing you want to do if you like dry fly fishing or nymph fishing and there's all sorts of different kinds of fly rods and reels and lines that it takes a long time to learn about it looks intimidating at first and of course You've got YouTube and other sorts of channels where you can spend a lot of time learning about the products and, and various techniques. But you've got great rivers here in Alberta just to go down and practice on the Bow River in southern Alberta, the Red Deer River, you know, in central Alberta, north and, and North Saskatchewan, the Athabasca and some of the smaller creeks and tributaries, lots of places where you've got easy access and you know just get out and and go for the experience i would because i i didn't know how to fly fish at all i didn't have that experience when i was young so i took some lessons in the winter time and in in school gymnasiums they have lessons where you can learn how to fly cast and stuff like that and then the, the second thing i would do is once you get out there and practice try and find somebody that's better than you as a caster because the big the biggest problem that i see in casting is people are going too fast and they're going way too far so they're losing tension you should be sort of a 10 to 1 so that you load the rod it's not like like hammering it out there it's about finesse and somebody can help you a whole lot that's got experience I, the other thing i would say if, if you're really creative consider taking some lessons there's the edmonton fly club here join them and if you wonder and start tying flies it, it's there's nothing more uh, satisfying than to tie a fly Put it on your line and go and catch a fish. Yeah. So, so that's something. And I would last, finish with this. You know what? If fly fishing isn't for you, fine and dandy. And I know that in most of the streams, I would catch more fish using a spinning rod and probably a panther martin or spinner than I do catching a fly, to tell you the honest truth. You don't have to always be a fly fisherman because everybody, I got neighbors and so on that go out with spinners and they're basically catching more fish than I am. So you can start with spinners, it's a lot easier to do. It doesn't cut, you can buy a spinning outfit for, for peanuts and get a few panther martins and nets and, and away you go and you'll catch some fish. Yeah, yeah and like Michael said, uh, if you're interested, Northern Lights uh, Fly Tying Club here in Edmonton, and I'm sure there are, there's a, uh, there are a couple of fly tying clubs in central Alberta and southern yeah. Alberta. And these are really, really great opportunities to, to go and socialize with um, folks that are knowledgeable and they're beginners just like you. And they'll be able to help you because you're going to find the fishing community is generally a very sharing community. They're, they want to see the sport continue to grow and develop. And they're all very, very conscientious about you know, handling fish and things of this nature. So there's lots and lots of opportunities to learn in your local area. A ton of, a ton of stock, pothole lakes, little lakes all over the place, that, and it's listed in the regulations every year. So there's a, a little pothole you can you can go to if you've got children, 
take them out there. You can even take a bobber and a worm and put it on a hook in somebody's pothole lakes uh, and little dugouts kind of thing. And you get some big fish in there and they're fine to eat and you can take them and it's, it's nice and easy to relax. Human development activities in the Athabasca River Basin have generated some major environmental concerns. Economic activity in the upper portion of the watershed is dominated by forestry, agriculture, and tourism, as well as three active coal mines and one closed. There are five pulp and paper mills in the upper half of the watershed. Forestry occurs throughout the river basin, while oil sands developments dominate the lower portion. A growing number of municipal wastewater treatment plants discharge into the Athabasca River. Unmanaged recreational activities are increasingly causing stress in several areas of the watershed. Mike and Terry have seen a change in fish numbers and the surrounding landscape over recent years. Mike, Terry, and those that also fish these waters can only hope that the decline can be stopped and such a special place as the Athabasca and Berlin is here for generations to come.